I'm Marty Stone. I'm out here on the on the west coast, as everybody says. I'm getting ready uh, to fish the Delta for one of our, our Elite Series events, but I stopped on a little lake that my buddy Jared Littner told me about, and, and I'm sitting out way offshore. You know, you hear the term thrown around a lot, pre-spawn, post-spawn, and to me it's almost one in the same type of fish, one in the same type place. You know, we write these big articles about it and make it sound real complicated, like they stage here, they position there. And, and to me, it's this simple. You look at the bays where they're gonna go to, like here in the, in the foreground, I've got a big bay where these fish, can, when they come in and they spread out the spawn, they've got many different areas they can go to. Well, I'm looking for the highway. I'm looking for the creek that's leading into it, and I'm looking for the point or the flat that swings in there where these fish are gonna follow it all the way in there and spread out. And when I find that particular point type area, then I'm going across it. Then I'm going across it with my electronics and I'm going across it with search baits like a Carolina rig or a jig or a crankbait. And I'm trying to find that key place. The key place being what's unique about it. Is it a piece of brush? Is it rock? Is there a grass edge? There's something that's gonna hold these fish. But here's the key with pre and post spawn. Normally, wherever they stop at before they go in. After they go in and do everything they've got to do, they're gonna come back out to the same identical places because the one thing that's definitely in common in both of those fish, both are feeding. One's feeding up to get ready to go in, pre-spawn fish. The other one is feeding up after they've went through the rigors of the spawn. So they can stop at the same place. Look for your ditches. Look for the flat places on top of your ditches that these fish will migrate to. Find the structure on top, have your search bait, and then you're fishing for the same fish, pre and post spawn. Same type of areas. The only difference might be in the post spawn, it might be a fish that you even have to slow down a lot more for. People miss that sometimes. A post spawn fish will be a lot more lethargic than a pre. Same place though, same location. Don't make it complicated. Once you find one good pre spawn place, chances are you found a great post spawn place as well. Carolina rigging, like a lot of other techniques, I've got a system and, and, and the way I rig this is, is very specific in the whole system. It, it all starts with the line first. It, it's fluorocarbon. I use 17 pound vicious fluorocarbon for my main line and my leader. I just feel like fluorocarbon is just so much more sensitive and Carolina rigging and a Texas rig too, so much of the bites are on the tail end of the cast. So I want as stiff a line as I can get without being the braid and fluorocarbon's it. It also helps you in clear water situation. So the line's the first part. The next, when I'm going into it, it's a tungsten weight. Right here, a lot of times I'll match colors, but this particular day I just use a regular silver and I'll do that a lot. Uh, I average anywhere between a one ounce and an ounce and a quarter. I want that big weight down there bouncing around on the bottom and that tungsten's got a very unique sound and even to help the sound more, I use some of True Tungsten's, they're called four speeds. I've got a six millimeter and an eight millimeter. The millimeters are the size. I like two. I like to have the different beads down there doing the clacking. When they hit that swivel, when they hit that weight, they clack. Four speeds, unlike other regular glass beads, they can withstand the beating of the tungsten to put on them. If you use regular glass and you're using tungsten, it'll explode the beads. Another part too, why tungsten? It's a smaller, denser material. You combine that with fluorocarbon, you're gonna feel so much more of the bottom. Lead is a very soft material. And when it's down there bouncing around on the bottom, you can't feel the structure. And if you're not feeling the structure, you're not gonna feel the bites. Then I go with just a regular swivel. I like to go black on the barrel swivel. And then my hook, it's an X point, four alt. It's a super sharp hook and it can drive them up home. Bait that I was using today was a Zoom Mag Finesse Worm. But the baits range for me. I'll go anywhere from an eight inch lizard, uh, everything Zoom, or uh, a Mag Finesse, a Mag Trick, a regular Finesse Worm. You know, it, it's all across the board, but it's always a soft plastic. Remember this though, when bite gets tough, always go with a straight tail worm. When the bite's really rocking and rolling, go with a curl tail, being a brush hog, baby brush hog, lizard, things like that. Leader, two and a half, three foot long. Now rod and reel, I have a seven and a half foot rod that I use, it's American Rod Smith. It's a one piece. It's my signature series, it's called the Marty Stone Casting Series. Again, it's a seven six. I want that extra length to really be able to make a long cast and on the hook set, 
be able to gain more line. On my reel, I use an Ardent XS 1000, 6 3 to 1 gear ratio. I want something that when I get that bite, I can gain a lot of line in a hurry. That, in a nutshell, is a system that I use from all the way from line to rod reel and the tackle in between. Do this, and I promise you'll catch more fish with a Carolina rig. A couple little things I like to do with my spinner baits before I fish with them. We're getting ready to jump here in the back of a cove and do a little bit. You know, you, you're here to talk about hand-tied spinner baits, and it's this simple. You take a regular bait like this one, that the skirt just basically comes down together. That's fine, that's great, that'll catch a fish, but I like to modify it one little step. I take the top part from the band up, and I trim all these little pieces. I cut about half of them off. Now, all of a sudden, you see the flare. When I stop that spinnerbait, when I'm reeling it in and I stop it, the back end flares, or the, the top of it from the head up in a flare, it actually move out. And this back creates another trailer, and then I add a zoom split tail on it if it's, if it's colored water like we've got here. If it's really clear water, I'll probably go with a translucent, a gold or silver bait, and then just make my skirt a little bit longer. But I always, always trim the top just like that. 